Good morning. Good morning, family. Welcome to Sunday broadcast for the Way Life Center. We are live this morning, um, just having traveled back home uh, from Ohio yesterday. And I'm going on just a few minutes early in order to, for, to give time for people to join us and uh, send out an announcement that we'd be live this morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. This week we are continuing our discussion on confidence. Good morning. Blessings in abundance. It's not yet showing me who's on here with me yet, so I can't see who you are. Say good morning in the comments so I know who's on with me. Blessings in abundance from Atlanta, Georgia. We are so excited. Confidence Month has been great, great, great. Good morning, Yuna. Yay. <laughs> good morning, sweetheart. Um, so we are continuing our teaching. Thank you, Yuna. I am so tired, Yuna. This morning, I struggled to get up. Um, you know, just this week with travel and getting home and everything. So I was really struggling this morning, Yuna. Thank you so much, honey. Good morning. Blessings in abundance as you're coming on. <clears throat> as you're coming on, please share. So we make sure all of our members and supporters know that we're live this morning and can join in for this, this um, conversation and this teaching on confidence and authenticity. Confidence and authenticity. That is our topic this morning as we continue our discussion on confidence for October. And we'll be back for life class this week, Wednesday at 7 p.m. inside of the Way Life Center Facebook group. We'll be back for the next installment of life class. I told you we're going to probably go over into November just a little bit, especially since um, I was called out of town uh, due to a death in the family. So we'll, we will continue with confidence life class, um, into the first week or two of November. And we also, our Turkey drive is still going. Good morning, Bill. Good morning. We appreciate all of your donations. Thank you so much for your donations and your support for this cause. This is our first annual Turkey drive, and we have raised almost half of the money we need, uh, for, to feed 200 families and individuals. We are almost at $2,500 uh, for half of our $5,000 goal. We are going to be giving out blankets, socks, and 200 turkeys and dinners. And so please make sure you keep giving, keep spreading the word and sharing those posts where we tag you in order for people to know about our movement in that cause. Really, really great cause. We pray and for blessings on everyone that, that supports uh, this mission as we prepare to give back this holiday season. We know the holidays can be really, really difficult for people. And so we are, are going to do our part in making a difference. And let's see. Oh, we have support groups and meditation classes coming. Please, if you're in Atlanta, Georgia, please um, make sure you tune in. We're going to be announcing our first support groups coming. Uh, for the Way Life Center, as well as meditation classes, I will be teaching a couple of meditation videos inside of the sub, um, Facebook group, inside of the Way Life Center Facebook group. So make sure you tune in and stay tuned inside the Facebook group for those videos as well. And we are so excited just about growth. We're so excited. Good morning, Jerrica. Welcome, hon, to Sunday broadcast. Blessings in abundance. So we're so excited about everything we have going on and the vision that we have for the Way Life Center in order to be able to teach people how to live abundantly and how to, to live in a different way in order to live um, the way God always intended for us to live. God said he came that we may have abundant life, right? Have life and that more abundantly. Good morning, Marlena. So we appreciate all of your donations. I was just giving a few minutes for some people to come in. As you're coming in, please remember to share even as we get going so people will know that we're live. I know everyone knew we were traveling this week and probably thought we weren't going to broadcast this morning, but we are here. So I know several of our members will probably catch it on replay. Uh, I was in Ohio um, this week and uh, Apostle Pope and I were in Ohio for with my family uh, for the funeral. And we were in Dayton, Ohio, where my aunt lived for most of her life. Good morning, Shasta. And uh, Andrea Cooks, she's one of our members. She is, was, is, lives in Dayton and she came over and saw us and we were able to hug her and see her as well. 
So we're able to have virtual membership all over the world. We have people who tune in from Finland, London, Canada, you name it. We have people all over the world who support this vision and, and what God is doing through us. So let's pray before we get started. God, God, I thank you. I thank you for this week. We thank you, God, that you're going to meet our needs even through this message. We thank you, God, that this week, even coming up, God, that you're with us and guiding us into our next level of abundant life. God, we thank you even now that you are revealing and encouraging and supporting and loving us into wholeness, into healedness, loving us into boldness and confidence. I thank you even now that you've given us a spirit of boldness and power, not to be timid, but to be bold, God. And we thank you even now for everything that you've done and everything that you're doing in us and through us. And I thank you, God, for blessing this message in advance. Amen. Good morning. Yay, good morning. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Okay, so this morning, one of the things that God was dropping in my spirit this week leading into this, this Sunday is I've had so many conversations with people in this past week that it's, it's a very consistent message that one of the things that, and I've been teaching on this in Confidence Life class as well, mm -hmm. is that one of the things that holds us back from being divinely confident in who we are, that causes us to hold back, play small, is our past, our past. We, we walk around with so much fear and shame and guilt over the things that have been done to us, over the choices we have made, over the things that, that we can't change, it's in the past. However, what it, it is so necessary that if you are going to come into your authentic self, that you begin to own who you are and where you've been. If you're walking around constantly condemning yourself for everything that you've been through and everything you've done as if you're comparing yourself and measuring yourself to a perfect measuring stick, right? Good morning. A perfect measuring stick. In other words, you're, you're saying to yourself, you're no good to be, to walk into destiny, to help others, to serve. If you don't have this picture perfect testimony, if your life has been bruised, if your life has, if you have gone through trials and tribulations and you're constantly feeling condemned, you're constantly feeling you're self condemning, right? Self condemning. One of the things that is so crucial, good morning, Patrice, is that you begin to forgive yourself. The confidence to be your authentic self. I think one of the things that is so difficult about being a believer is being able to embrace the good and the bad. Being able to embrace that you would not be this amazing person that you are right now if you hadn't been through the trials and tribulations that you've been through to get here today. I've heard Bishop Jakes preach a message years and years ago that blessings and burdens go hand in hand. Blessings and burdens go hand in hand. In other words, if you didn't have the struggle, you wouldn't have learned how to fight. You wouldn't have become a warrior. You wouldn't have built this level of strength. And there's a scripture I posted up above in the scripture references that says, God has not given us a spirit of fear. He has given us, he has not made us timid. You're not to be timid. God did not give you a spirit of fear. You are to be bold. You are to be courageous. You are to roar like a lion. You are to be approaching your life in such a way that this is me, baby. Love it or leave it. And I'm here to live. I'm here to guide and to give as much as I can. And when I leave this earth, I'm going to leave here empty. I'm going to give it my all. Give it my all. Do You need the confidence to be your authentic self. This is why we're teaching on this for this entire month, right? Good morning, Dan. Because 
It's going to take confidence. The, the number one battle that you're fighting is not with some haters or naysayers or the family in your life that doesn't like you or the people who come against you or the coworkers who don't like you. The number one battle that you are fighting is you. This heart, this mind, this spirit, the old mindsets, the old fears that keep trying to overtake you. The old ways that keep trying to overtake you. That is your number one battle in life. It's not other people. It's not. It's yourself. Because you're going to have to realize that you are in a battle over your own life. Over your own life. Sometimes we can be so focused on helping others that you're forgetting that God said, what does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? You can be so outwardly focused that you can't even live authentically for yourself. And I, and I see this time and again with members and with clients, time and again, the struggle to want to fit in, the struggle to want to please others, the struggle, always worrying about how something's going to be perceived by someone else, worrying about, is it going to be received by someone else, worrying about how your reputation or how it comes off or how someone is thinking about what, how you said what you said, worrying about every word that you say, worrying about how your actions are going to be received. And in the meantime, you can lose yourself, the most authentic version of you, because you keep filtering yourself through the people-pleasing filter, through filtering yourself through fear and worry. Good morning, Tiffany. Filtering yourself through this lens of what society says you should be or you should be trying to be instead of being authentic enough to say, this is me. Good morning, Selena. This is me. This morning, Monique, Shanita, Selena, Tiffany, Bill, Yuna, I'm asking you, who are you? Flaws and all. What are your stories? What, what have you been through to get to where you are today? And guess what? If not too many people know the truth of your story, they don't know you. We like to hide behind these perfect images that we've cultivated and crafted because we believe that we have to be perfect in order to be respected. But in the meantime, that is why we, we're, it's called duplicity, double lives, where we're living and showing people one thing, but we're struggling behind closed doors with something else. God did not call us to be duplicitous. He didn't call you to compartmentalize and you're this person with that person and you're this person with another person. No, he called you to be whole and to be healed to where you are one. You are you. You're you coming. You're you going. You're you on front of the camera. You're you privately with someone else private one on one. You're you in a small group. You're you on a stage in front of thousands. You're just being you. And this morning, I want to give you permission to say it's okay to just be me. There's no one else like you. And one of the things that holds back that holds God's people back is that they're so afraid to be authentic, but, but in not being authentic, you can't get the results of just being you because there's no one like you, baby. There's no one like you. You are fabulous, authentic. The authentic you is fabulous and wonderfully and fearfully made. You are so unique. Your voice, your opinions, your experiences, your past, the choices you've made. Really quickly in the comments, I want you to list one thing that you have felt shame over. List one thing that you have felt shame. 
that in your past you felt shame, something that you feel like, you know, I just, I just, I struggle with telling my story because, you know, they're going to judge me. I, in, in the comments, I just want you to have the boldness right now to share one thing, one thing that you feel like you don't really tell the masses or go public talking about because you're, you've been so ashamed over that struggle or you're so ashamed over something you did 20 years ago or you're so, you're so you, you, you know, it's kind of like you'll tell some people very privately, but maybe not tell them everything. You maybe try to minimize it. You may, may Marlena says my marriage, right? Name something, you guys, in the comments. I, I dare you. I dare you to be bold today with just the people right here on this message with us and say, here's something that's held me back. Here, there's something that I have been feeling shame about for so long. But, in, but if you notice, shame is a vicious cycle, you guys. Shame will keep you in a cycle to where you won't change anything. You're ashamed of it. You don't talk about it and let the light shine on it. Selena says, allowed men to use me and not just physically, right? Financially, emotionally, Selena, spiritually, Tiffany Little, my promiscuous past. I had an abortion in college. My freshman year got pregnant by my boyfriend, had an abortion and turned around and got pregnant again by the same man, dummy, didn't learn as if we don't know where babies come from, right? Got pregnant again and had my oldest son and then married him trying to make it right because we didn't come from, right? We didn't come from, oh, you date and have sex. No, you get married. There was no premarital sex. Bill says my failure as a husband, you know, mom didn't want me. Jerrica, I'm not ashamed of my past anymore because my story has helped others. Amen. Jerrica, list something. Jerrica, list something that used to hold you captive, that you, you used to be so ashamed of, that you wouldn't talk about it publicly. Patrice, being raped, failing in business, promiscuity in my 20s and being a fool for men, aborting my gifts from God. Amen. Right? Listen. Den, looking to men for validation, not happy with me. Yes, right? Patrice, my gifts, AKA babies, right? Guess what? You guys are sitting, these are, your past is what makes us and we can't overcome it until we can testify about it we over that's the word we overcome by the word the verbal 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 we overcome by the word of our testimony carrie says codependency monique my family secrets molestation patrice i'm so tired of being ashamed of it good morning rashida right so guess what the Bible has thousands and thousands of years of wisdom, ancient wisdom, universal wisdom. Don't think that the Bible came along just on the scene from a few hundred years ago, right? No, the Bible is literally uses principles from even way before Jesus was ever born. It's got principles in it of ancient wisdom, universal divine wisdom. It says the word of our testimony, we overcome my weight now. Dash, not a fame, but fear has held me back. Shame and fear are the same thing, Dash. We can label it all different kinds of things, but the root of it all is fear. Facing it is so hard, but it's so necessary, like you said, to overcome. Kitty, outsourcing my happiness, not able to speak up. Jerrica, only felt beautiful when a man said I was, but thank God I'm not like that anymore. I know my worth and what I have to give. Amen. Listen, we all have fears. We all have things we have been through. It, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something today. The more you can embrace all your flaws, all your fears, everything, every, 
every mistake, every situation you've been in where you feel like it didn't represent God or represent God's best in your life, or you chose fear over faith and you, but if you don't stop, time out, time out. Dish, thank you Dish for telling me how to pronounce your name. Dish, time out. It's a time out. I want you to take a time out right now for one second. And I want you to recognize that if you don't take a time out and evaluate the areas where you're still operating in fear, what does fear look like? Afraid of what people think, afraid to tell the truth, afraid to speak your real opinions, afraid of your real life and true stories, Af you're not there anymore, but here's the key. You can't move on to where God's trying to take you if you can at least overcome where you've been by talking about it. And fear will cause you to say, well, you know, I do share here and I do share here, but guess what? Leadership, leadership, which you wouldn't even be on this call right now. You wouldn't even be on this announcement right now. You wouldn't be on the Sunday broadcast for the Way Life Center. You would not be connected to the popes and connected to the Way Life Center if you were not called to some next level of leadership. Yuna, afraid of abandonment. I got that too, Yuna. Abandonment issues. Rashida, my disability and people not believing in me. Yep. Real life issues, you guys. And it's not even like, oh, this is just in the past. No, we still deal with these things. Things can trigger us and trigger that a fear of abandonment. But guess what? We got to own it. We got to own it. Because the only way we graduate to the next level is to deal and learn the lesson right now. Monique, afraid of rejection. Patrice, goodness, the waterworks are activating this morning, happily letting the tears flow, time to release, amen. Not measuring up, Bill says. Corinne, you speak in facts in my New York voice. <laughs> so listen, you know how we hold back? We hold back. We don't wanna, it's like, uh, but Rebecca, leadership, no, no, let me redefine leadership for you. Let me redefine leadership. Servant leadership, God's type of leadership, is not based on you respecting me because of a title. It's not based on you respecting me because of how much money I have or the title I wear or how I look. Servant-based leadership is based on what someone has been through and what they have overcome, and then them sowing into other people. So guess what? If I show you my scars, if I show you my scars, and you look at me now and say, Rebecca had an abortion in college? Rebecca is on her third marriage? Carrie Pope's my third marriage. It took me three times to get it right. Who's hearing me this morning? Rebecca's been through domestic violence. Whoa, wait a minute. A man was putting his hands on Rebecca? Yeah. So sometimes we mix up, we think that leadership is about trying to be perfect. It's not about being perfect. It's about owning your stuff. It's about owning what you've been through. It's a be, being able to stand here flat-footed and say, yes, that stuff happened to me. Yes, I made some bad choices. But baby, you don't have to stay where you're at. And guess what the trick of the enemy is? The trick of the enemy is trying to get you to stay in a place of shame, a place of fear, where you will just keep recycling those things over and over again to make you feel like you're not worthy. And guess what? If you don't feel worthy, you will not receive the next things that God has for you. You won't level up. Shannon says, abandonment issues, fear of rejection and no recognition of my self-worth. 
Jen says, blaming others for my issues, not holding myself accountable. Kitty says, I admire your courage to share your story. Thank you, Kitty. You and a servant leadership is based on the things that we have overcome to help other people. It is not about being perfect. Servant leadership. It's about me being able to say, this is me. Baby, look, if God loves me and God approves of me, listen, people love to talk about me. People who know me from years ago and knew when I was throwing some of the biggest parties in Atlanta, honey, listen, they, can I be real, y'all? Hello, come on. When I knew how to turn it up, I knew how to drop 200 people on a party like it was nothing, honey. I was the party starter. And they want to look at me where I was just a few years ago and come forward and say, how in the world? She's married to an apostle. Now she's a pastor and she's a coach and she's doing these businesses and because you met me in just a chapter, just a paragraph in the, in the story of my life, in the book of my life, they came in, came in on one small chapter and had no idea. They had no idea who you are. And guess the mistake you make. You make the mistake of getting stuck in that chapter where other people met you. You keep turning back the book to go back to the chapter where people knew you from how many years ago instead of turning forward to where you are now. You keep going back and rereading the chapter. That's what you're doing every time you condemn yourself. Oh, every time that voice, that inner voice, that inner critic in your head says, mm, yeah, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I can't call myself a pastor. I can't do this. I don't, I don't, I'm, who am I to coach somebody? Who am I to write a book? Who am I to, who am I to think I can lead? Who am I to be on a stage? Who am I to start a mega ministry? Who am I? Who am I? Oh, you know, they did, they're going to talk about me because I used to be twerking on the table. They're going to talk about me. They remember me throwing up in the bushes. They're going to talk about me. They're going to know about my abortion. They're going to talk about me. They're going to know I was promiscuous. They're going to know I was sleeping with this one and that one. They're going to, you keep turning back the page and rereading the old story. It's not who you are anymore. We are allowed to grow. Humans have a horrible habit of wanting to only, they want to dictate. This is who you are. If that's who you were when I met you, this is who you are. If that was my experience with you, people can change. And guess what? Trauma, pain, fear, grief. It takes its toll. Somebody can come in in your life before God has given you that next measure of healing. And honey, you could have been losing your mind. You could have been losing your mind in the moment when someone met you. Given different circumstances in the right environment, honey, we are all human, fallible, flawed, hurting. But baby, when God gets a hold of you and begins to turn your life around, when you give everything over to God and say, God, have your way in my life. Have your way in my life. I'm tired of living this way. I'm tired. I'm just sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm tired of hurting. I'm tired of being ashamed. I'm tired of being afraid of what people are going to think or what people are going to say. When you get tired and you just give up and you give everything over to God. Listen, there was a point in my life, I reached a point where I was so broken down. I was so tired. And I find I was, I'll just never forget being in a fetal position in my bed. And I was just crying out to God, have your way with my life. I give up. I'm done. I give up. Everything that I tried didn't work. Everything I put my hand to seemed to just come to crashing down. Nothing I did was prospering. And I just couldn't seem to get anything right. And I said, God, just have your way. I give up. I give up. I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of trying this and trying that and trying this and trying that. Have your way in my life. I'm Have your way. I am who you say I am. I'll go where you tell me to go. I'll do what you tell me to do. I'll say what you tell me to say. I am who you say I am because obviously I don't know. I didn't know. Why? Fear. I was afraid. My father was an apostle. 
grew up in ministry. My gifts were so powerful from the time I was young. I didn't want none of it. I opted out. I had so much spiritual abuse and charge hurt, guys. I was like, nah, I'm good. I ain't trying to be in ministry. I don't want nothing to do with these self-righteous, hypocritical people. I don't want nothing to do with these people, the type of people who have hurt me and talked about me and talked about my family and come against the people you love. I'm like, mm, I'm good. But I didn't realize I couldn't run from who I am. Let me tell you something to set you free today. You know how you feel like there's this greater calling on your life and you feel like, you know, God has some greater things for you to do, but you, you get that all mixed up with stereotypical ministry. You get that mixed up with church and religion and you get that mixed up with the, your parents and you get that mixed up with, with leaders who have hurt you and misled you or used you and you get that all mixed up with all of these experiences you've had. Because in my mind, my biggest fear, you guys, is because I felt like giving myself over to God meant I couldn't be me. I, I think someone's going to be able to relate to this. That if I really surrender all and follow God, that I somehow have to be able to live up to all these rules that... I learned from church and religion that said, you've got to be this way, that way, this way, that way. You've got, you can't do this. You can't, it, it felt more like a prison sentence than freedom because I'm someone who loves to live bold. I love to have fun. When I met my husband, he's an apostle. I said, look, I'm going to tell you right now. Um, don't be asking me to only have a glass of wine when we're at home. I'm going to sit at the table at dinner with a glass of wine. And anybody who walks through the restaurant is going to see me with a glass of wine. I am not going to live my life being one way behind closed doors. I need somebody to hear me this morning. Thank you, God. You can be you. Authentically. Be 100% you and show up just as you are. And if there is something that needs to change, if there's something that needs to change, God will work that thing out inside of you. You don't have to worry and say, I can't be this and I can't serve and I can't do what I'm called to do because I'm not perfect enough. I don't fit these rules. Show up. And if there's something that needs to change, God, let God work that thing out in you. I need somebody to hear me. God will work it out. And there's some things that you're afraid of that don't even need to change, honey. God needs you to be you. He needs you just like you are to reach people who are like you, who can't resonate or relate to the people who are not like you. <sighs> Karini needs you with all your crazy colored hair and your makeup. He needs you with your mouth willing to say whatever you need to say, whatever comes across your mind. He needs you, Karen, for the people who are assigned to you. Marlena, he needs you. In your marriage story, in the people who are suffering, to say, I can get out. I don't have to stay here. And when I finally let go of that fear of saying, I somehow have to be perfect or I somehow have got to fit this mold, this stereotype of what ministry looks like. And when God, he dropped it in my spirit. This was years ago, you guys, before I even met Pastor Pope. God showed me, I just need you to be you. I just need you to be you, Rebecca. I don't need you to be like anybody else. And when this freedom came to just be me, just be me. That it's the ministry of Rebecca to whoever needs it. The ministry of Rebecca. I didn't have to be like Bishop Jakes. I didn't have to be like Joyce Meyer. I didn't have to be 
like anybody else. I can just show up as me. But guess what? The healed me, the real me, the powerful me, the whole me. But when you make up your mind to show up, God will begin to heal. God will begin to put together all the pieces. He'll begin to pull everything and knit everything back together. He'll begin to bring everything back to you that you've lost. He'll begin to everything you've desired, all those broken places in your heart. God knows the desires of your heart. He knows the desires of your heart. He knows what you desire. He knows what you need. He knows what you want. And you don't have to be afraid. Guess what? Come on. Everything you desire is in God. Everything you desire is on the other side of you surrendering and being authentic and letting God lead you every day right on into abundant life. Everything, your money, everything you've been desiring, your purpose, love, wealth, health, peace of mind, joy, it was in the letting go. When I finally started letting go, <sighs> what? You mean the very thing I've been running from? The very thing, me not wanting people to know my flaws, they know anyway, they know. But what if you own it? What if you own it, right? What if, what if Marlena writes a book miserable marriage ain't me no more or i mean like you know what i'm saying like you just you just literally like go there you just really own it what if you just really just go there and stop trying to worry about what people think i'll never forget when i first started doing videos you guys when i just i started walking in this freedom of saying this is me love it or leave it this is me i'm just gonna be me and I started doing videos, you guys, and I just started getting real. I mean real. And they're just like just now when there's tears, you know, you already know when tears start flowing down my eyes, guys, it got the Holy Ghost done showed up, right? And I just would get real. And literally, that's when everything started happening. When I started telling the truth. Not when I started, when I was acting like I had all the answers, no, when I just spoke from my place of truth, my place of truth, that gives other people permission to say, oh, Rebecca's real with it and she's living a good life now and she's happy. Well, I can tell the truth too. Okay, I can tell the truth. I can walk in my truth. I don't have to act like everything's perfect. But initially, you're going to have to have the confidence and the boldness to say, yeah, I've been through some things. Before it gets better, in order for it to get better, you've gotta get honest. You gotta get honest. You gotta get honest with yourself. You gotta get honest with those around you. You gotta get honest with God. God knows. He's been there all. When you were sleeping with the men and women, when you were lying, cheating, doing everything you were doing, when you were putting yourself down, when you married him, that dude, when you knew you weren't supposed to and in your spirit, God was trying to get you to not do it and you didn't, he was right there. God's been with us in every low place, every high place. He knows us better than we know ourselves. You don't have to be ashamed. Right there when you're cursing, right there when you're sexing, right there when you're drinking. Listen, there's stuff people don't even like me to say. I'll, I'll never forget. In my party days, my gifts are so strong. And sometimes when you drink, it lowers all of the, 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 the inhibitions and the limitations you place on yourself and the fears that are there. I'll never forget I was at a bar, at a, a club, and I was standing at the bar getting a drink. I was already tipsy, y'all. I was already drunk. Getting another drink. And there was this woman standing at the bar, and I began to talk to her. And do you know... That as I stood there drunk talking to that woman, God began to prophesy to that woman out of my mouth. And I prayed with her at the bar in the middle of the club and she began to cry and break down at the bar in the middle of the club. 
I'll wait for it. See, that's the stuff religion don't want to talk about. Your gifts are your gifts. I don't care where you're at. I don't care what condition you're in. I don't care how low you feel like you've gone. Honey, the moment I open my mouth, God said he'll use a rock. He'll use a rock. If no one else will do what God's calling us to do, he will speak out of a rock. He will use whoever is willing. God, I began to just talk to her. And the next thing I know, I felt the Holy Spirit fall down inside of the club right there in that conversation. And God spoke to her exactly what he needed her to hear because she was sick and she was afraid she was going to die. And God spoke to her and I prayed for her right there in the middle of that club. See, we like to think there's all these rules to how all of this works. There's all these rules. And if it doesn't happen like this, I don't know about you, but I've been in church before and God goes to use me. And, and people later on, well, what, what made you feel like you could talk to her like that? What made you feel like you could pray for her? What made, what, who gave you the authority? What, because you don't have a title because you don't, you're not a part of their ministry team or you're not part of their usher board or you're not part, honey, listen. And I look straight him straight in the face and say, God. God gave me the authority to speak to her, thus saith the Lord. God gave me the authority to walk in my gifts. You want to sit here and question, but you're not even concerned that, that the woman who needed the word got what she needed because it didn't come from you that day. But they're more concerned with the politics. They're more concerned with authority and pecking order. I know I'm talking to somebody today. And guess what? I, I got ghosts. I'm not going to stay in no ministry where you sitting here trying to cage me in. And that's one of the things God released me from. He said, you don't need to be in a church to serve and minister and operate in your gifts, Rebecca. I can you turn on a video camera, write it in a book. You know, it does not have to happen in the four walls of the church. It is time for us to take it and dismantle it and take it to people in the world. Forget about church. Forget about the building, you guys. It's time for you to operate in your ministry, in your gifts, no matter where you're at. You can turn on a video camera. You can pray with the woman at the grocery store. If you tune in to your gifts and what God's calling you to do, you could be walking down the aisle of the grocery store and God say, stop, pray for her, hug her. And next thing you know, you're praying for her. Next thing you know, there's words flowing out of your mouth and you don't know she was on the brink of suicide before God intercepted her in the grocery aisle because you're an obedient servant, an obedient Soul, God will use you wherever you're at. You could be on the job. I have prayed with people for healing and they're healed on the spot. Not in church. We're forming street teams through the Life Center. We're going to take this stuff out. We're going to have teams of people going out to hug and pray with people. Hug and pray. You ain't got to convert them to nothing. Don't eat. We're not even trying to convert nobody to nothing. Just love on people. What did I just say? If God has something inside of someone that needs to change, he will do that work. It's not your job to change anybody. Not your job. Your job is to love. Your, God, your job is to guide people into abundant life and greater love. It is not your job to judge, convert, do anything. If, you, if you're on our street team and you go out and you meet a Muslim, pray with that Muslim, hug that Muslim, leave them with blessings and say, come to the Life Center and come see us and let God deal with anything else. Why do you think we say we're interdenominational? I don't care what denomination you are. Guys, I have met Muslims. I have met Buddhists who are more Christian than Christians. More Christian, more full of love and grace and mercy and charity. And we want to judge, oh, you don't believe in Jesus. You believe in Jesus and a lot of people believe in Jesus and they're a hot mess. 
full of anger, bitterness, unforgiveness, no love flowing whatsoever. If God, if you had to judge this person to say whether or not they are of God, you'd be looking at them like, I don't know that I want to know your God. I think I want to go be Muslim or Buddhist. If, if, if I have to judge your God by how you are, I don't want your God. I don't want your Jesus. I don't know about y'all, but I have felt that. I'll look at people and be like, if you're repping Jesus, honey, I don't even want Jesus. And it's sad, but it's true. Clickish and judgmental and hoity-toity and stuck up and belittling people and make, if you don't come dressed right, if you don't say things right, if we're so quick to critique, so quick to judge, so quick, man, I ain't got time. How about if we make our religion love? God is love. It's that simple. God is love. But it starts with you. It starts with you. It says, what does the scripture say? Love your, thy neighbor as yourself. You should be loving your neighbor. Well, you can't love your neighbor if you don't love you. Guess what love does? It's patient. It's kind. It doesn't judge. It doesn't boast. It's long-suffering. Apply that to yourself. What if you began to not judge yourself? What if you began to forgive yourself and stop being judge, jury, and executioner over your own life? What if you began to treat yourself with love and kindness? Stop thinking it's just about you treating everybody else with love and kindness. If you want freedom, freedom, true freedom, to be yourself, to just be who God created you to be. Start loving on yourself. I'm going to ask you a question. Did you do the best you can do? Given the circumstances and what you knew in the certain situations you found yourself in, did you do the best you could do? I tell people a lot of the time when you're dealing with people, Look at people and say, they're doing the best they could do from their current state of consciousness. They're doing the best they can do from their current state of awareness, healing, and wholeness. They're doing the best they can do from their current state. That will give you compassion, compassion for people. It'll give you patience for people. It'll, and if you apply that to where you've been, you were doing the best you could do from your, cur your current place of consciousness, where you were before, you were doing the best you could do. You did, think about that. But just, and you're not where you were, thank God. Apply that to yourself and apply that to other people. And now hold yourself accountable to keep growing. Keep healing. If you are not in Confidence Life class yet, get in Confidence Life class. Go back, review the videos and homework for Confidence Life class. Our third module is coming this week. It's so much good stuff in there for healing, you guys. You gotta do your work. What is your work? Your work is dealing with what you've been through, processing it, healing, and forgiving yourself, forgiving others so we can move on in power and have a sound mind and love. Amen. So make sure you tune into Confidence Life class. Listen, if this has been a blessing to you, we are preparing to open up a location so we can have life classes and meditation classes so that we are able to reach our communities. We are not church as usual, you guys. We are not church as usual. We are not church as usual. This is a movement of healing and love. 
a movement of healing and love. We can't even guarantee you we're going to have a Sunday broadcast every Sunday. When we open our location, we can't even guarantee you that. We're going to have so much going on throughout the week to help teach you and hold you accountable to live abundantly. We can't even guarantee we're going to motivate you every Sunday. You're not going to need that every Sunday. But you are going to be able to have life classes, meditation classes, to learn how to think, how to talk, business classes, entrepreneurship. We've got to teach you how to live. Leadership. We are, we believe in leadership. We believe in equipping you to go out and do exactly what God's called you to do. What are your gifts? What are your skills? What are your talents? What are you supposed to be doing? Dish says, I will fly in to visit once you have a location. Awesome, Dish. So there's a button up above. Donate, partner with us, partner with us. Sign up for a certain amount every week or every month that you're going to give. Partner with us. We are looking at locations and we are, listen, we're not waiting just for a location. We're starting our support groups, meditation classes. You see, we're, we're launching, but we need your support. If this has been a blessing to you, sow into us. We'll continue to sow into you. We appreciate you so much. And listen, this is where I, I this is how we're all so different. Do whatever God puts on your heart to do. It's not about a percentage. It could be more than 10%. It can be less than 10%. It could be, do whatever God puts on your heart to do. That's what you're called to do. Learn how to listen to God for yourself. Learn how to listen to God for your, if God, if it just drops in your spirit, a hundred dollars, so a hundred dollars, whatever it is, whatever it is, sow it and be obedient in your spirit to what God's leading you to do. Amen. All right. Don't forget our turkey drive as well. We're almost halfway there. We are going to feed 200 families this, um, this holiday season. We are determined to make a difference in the world, you guys. So not just in our own lives, but reaching out to the masses. Amen. All right. Love you. I'll be up for prayer in the morning, Monday morning, 7 a.m. right here. We also have life class inside of the support group for the Way Life Center, the Way Life Center uh, Facebook group. Check in there for the Confidence Life class. Amen. And I will see you tomorrow morning. And of course, Sunday broadcast next Sunday at 10 a.m. November 16th, if you're in Atlanta, Georgia, we need all hands on deck volunteers to come out, hand out turkeys, prepare dinners, hand out socks and blankets. November 16th in Atlanta, Georgia, you'll get an email from us with more information on where to come and what to do. All right. Love you. Blessings in abundance. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.